The Black Sea, a vast, nearly enclosed body of water bordered by six countries. Its shores have been home to civilizations for thousands of years, and its waters have long provided food, trade routes, and livelihoods. But beneath its surface, a troubling transformation is taking place. Large parts of the Black Sea are gradually transforming into what scientists call dead zones. These are areas where oxygen levels in the water are so low that most marine life cannot survive. Without oxygen, fish, crabs, and other animals that are crucial to the marine ecosystem either leave in search of habitable waters or die. This leaves behind a lifeless, barren area where only the most oxygen-tolerant species, such as certain bacteria and jellyfish, can survive. These surviving species often do little to support a healthy or balanced marine environment, further destabilizing the ecosystem. The Black Sea's vulnerability to dead zones lies in its unique geographic and hydrological makeup. Unlike open oceans, the Black Sea is almost entirely enclosed, with only a narrow connection to the Mediterranean via the Bosporus Strait. This restricted circulation limits the exchange of oxygen-rich water with the outside world, making the Black Sea more susceptible to the effects of nutrient pollution and oxygen depletion. Adding to this challenge, the Black Sea acts as a natural basin for runoff from surrounding regions. The rivers that feed it carry not just fresh water but also a steady stream of nutrients from human activities. These nutrients, primarily nitrogen and phosphorus, act as powerful stimulants for microscopic algae. Algae grow rapidly when these nutrients are abundant, sometimes forming blooms that spread across the water's surface. As these algae die and decompose, the oxygen in the water is consumed at an alarming rate. The result is hypoxia, a severe reduction in oxygen levels that turns large parts of the sea into inhospitable zones for most marine life. This process fundamentally alters the balance of life in the Black Sea, causing ecosystems to collapse in areas affected by these dead zones. Understanding this transformation provides a window into the delicate balance required to sustain marine ecosystems and the cascading effects that occur when this balance is disrupted. This isn't just an environmental crisis. It has direct consequences for the millions of people who rely on the Black Sea for their livelihoods. For fishermen, the appearance of dead zones means fewer fish to catch, leading to declining incomes and increased financial insecurity. Traditional fishing practices, passed down through generations, are now at risk of disappearing entirely in some communities as fish stocks plummet. In many cases, fishermen are forced to travel further and work harder to find remaining fish, adding to their operational costs and diminishing profits. For the broader economies of countries bordering the Black Sea, this decline poses a serious challenge. Fishing industries, coastal tourism, and even shipping can be affected by the degraded health of the sea. The loss of biodiversity and productive fisheries reduces the availability of key resources that many coastal communities depend on, threatening their ability to sustain themselves. Coastal towns and villages, which often rely on fishing and related industries, feel the economic strain most acutely, leading to increased unemployment and, in some cases, migration away from the affected areas. Adding to this problem is the increasing dominance of species like jellyfish, which thrive in low oxygen environments. While jellyfish can survive in conditions that kill off most other marine life, they do not support the same ecosystems as fish. They don't serve as a food source for many commercially important species, nor do they play a role in maintaining healthy habitats. Their rise is a visible symptom of the imbalance in the Black Sea, highlighting the collapse of its once diverse marine ecosystems. One of the major forces driving this crisis is nutrient pollution. Fertilizers used on farmland are a key contributor. When these fertilizers are applied to crops, much of the nitrogen and phosphorus they contain eventually runs off into nearby streams and rivers, especially after heavy rains. These nutrients then flow downstream, accumulating in larger rivers that feed into the Black Sea. Urban areas are another major source of pollution. Untreated sewage, stormwater runoff, and industrial discharge often make their way into rivers, carrying not only nutrients but also harmful chemicals and waste. These pollutants combine with agricultural runoff, creating a toxic cocktail that feeds the problem of eutrophication in the sea. The rivers themselves play a crucial role in transporting these pollutants. The Danube River, the largest in Europe, is the most significant contributor. As it winds its way through 10 countries, 
It picks up nutrients and waste from agricultural lands, industrial centers, and urban areas. By the time it empties into the Black Sea, it carries a massive load of pollutants, acting as a primary highway for nutrient pollution. Other rivers, such as the Dnieper and the Don, also contribute, adding to the cumulative impact. This transboundary nature of the issue makes it particularly challenging to address. The pollutants carried by these rivers originate from a wide range of sources across multiple countries, making coordinated efforts essential but difficult to achieve. Each nation along the rivers has its own economic priorities and environmental policies, and finding common ground for reducing pollution remains a complex task. Without a unified approach, the burden of nutrient pollution on the Black Sea will only continue to grow, deepening the crisis and its far-reaching consequences. Historically, the Black Sea supported vibrant fisheries and coastal communities. Species like sturgeon, known for their valuable caviar, thrived in its waters. Today, many of these species are in decline. Overfishing, pollution, and the expanding dead zones are all to blame. Scientists studying the Black Sea have observed another troubling trend. Its natural layers of water, oxygenated at the surface and anoxic in the deeper regions, are shifting. Normally, the anoxic zone, which is devoid of oxygen, begins at around 200 meters. But in some areas, this layer is rising closer to the surface, reducing the habitable zone for marine life. This phenomenon is unique to the Black Sea because of its geology. The deeper waters are naturally anoxic due to limited circulation. But human activities are now exacerbating the problem, making these conditions worse. Pollution from urban areas also contributes. Wastewater from cities often flows directly into the sea, untreated. This waste brings not only nutrients, but also harmful chemicals and pathogens. Over time, these pollutants accumulate, further stressing the marine environment. Efforts to study and understand the Black Sea's dead zones are ongoing. Researchers are working to map the affected areas, monitor oxygen levels, and identify the sources of pollution. Their findings highlight just how complex and interconnected this problem is. Some initiatives are underway to address these issues. Farmers are being encouraged to use fertilizers more efficiently, reducing the runoff into rivers. Wetland restoration projects aim to filter nutrients before they reach the sea. In urban areas, investments in wastewater treatment facilities are being made to improve the quality of water flowing into the Black Sea. These measures are important steps, but they require cooperation and long-term commitment from all countries in the region. The Black Sea is a vital resource, not just for the countries that surround it, but for the millions of people who depend on its waters. The growing dead zones are a warning sign, an indication of the stress the sea is under. Reversing these trends won't be easy, and it won't happen overnight. But by understanding the problem and taking action, there is hope for the Black Sea. Protecting its waters is not just about saving marine life, it's about preserving a way of life for generations to come.